Hi, fourth grade teachers. My name is Kelly, and today I'm going to walk you through the Midwest plan for social studies. Just like in the other units, you spend two to three days on the region work, and then there's 11 days for the main unit for a total of 13 to 14 days for completion. There is a unit question map that you can look at to see the compelling and supporting questions. In this unit, students will learn about the characteristics of the Midwest, and we're focusing on Iowa corn, agriculture, and railroads. Students will practice their inquiry skills to learn how agriculture and technology have changed and stayed the same over time. Our compelling question for this unit is, how does Iowa corn impact Iowans and the world? We have three supporting questions. How has farming in Iowa seen continuity and change? What impact did technology have on farming and life in Iowa? And how does corn connect Iowa to places around the world? The first three days of this unit are region work. So there is the Midwest region packet, or there is a book on TrueFlix that can be quite helpful. There's the Midwest question packet. Review the state locations, but don't spend time quizzing for memorization. There's an online Satara game that can be helpful for recognizing the different states in the Midwest region. There is a slideshow that can be used to help you move through the main part of the unit. Have students spend time looking at this infographic to see the various uses of corn. Have the students take a look at this picture and see what they notice. Students could complete a WDIS or a what do I see, and they can also generate some questions with a QFT process. Let students spend time looking over this map of corn production, writing down any types of questions, or an I see, I think, I wonder about the different things that they have looked at so far. Then introduce the compelling questions so that students understand that we're looking at the overall impact of Iowa corn on Iowans and the world. Over the next two days, students spend time working on supporting question one. Students will use this resource from the USDA about the number of farms and the average farm size in Iowa from 1950 to about 2014. You will note that the number of farms decreases while the average size of the farm increases. They'll also take a look at this map, which is the corn yield map of Iowa from 1933. And in here, you can see which areas produce the most corn for the state. They would be the lightest areas. That should be compared to this map of corn yield from 2018. Have students brainstorm ideas of why the production of corn increased so much between 1933 and 2018. Then let the students know that something happened where 2018 was actually a lower producing year than 2017 or 2019. Tell students that there was a drought this year and that it impacted the amount of corn produced. Ask students to make a prediction based on this map as to where the drought most impacted farming. Then view the map on slide 10 to see if student predictions were accurate. There are some additional resources that can be used to learn more about droughts and how they can affect corn production and what it means for farmers. Take a look at the sections of the TrueFlix or Pebble Go Next books about Iowa to find out about how jobs in Iowa have stayed the same or have changed over time. The next couple of days, we focus on farm technology, and we take a look at a picture of the John Deere logo. We share that a lot of change has happened in farming related to this company and others like it. After that, it's a good time to read the book John Deere, That's Who. The Iowa Ag Literacy Organization has a lesson on farming then and now that you could use in place of this book if needed. Slide 15 has the image that students looked at at the beginning of the unit and a more recent image of a John Deere harvester. Students should make observations and compare these two images. For the next lesson, we start looking at railroads. Students should take a look at this picture and see what they notice. Then we take a look at supporting question two and consider the impact of technology had on farming in life in Iowa. We have a map about some of the proposed railroad routes in Iowa during the 1850s. We have an image of the inside of a railroad car as well as this image of the Pacific Fruit Express. This can open up a conversation about the benefits of refrigerated railroad cars. The next thing to explore is the freight traffic list from 1922 and 1931. And you can look at the actual primary source of it, or there are a couple of transcripts which make it a lot easier to look at. Have students compare what kinds of items were transported as well as the amounts between the two years. In the next lesson, we focus more on transportation. So how did updates to technology affect transportation? There are a few resources to look through in this one, so it might be easiest to set up stations around the room for each of the four sections. Have students work in small groups or with a partner to complete each station. One of the stations is to compare the map of Iowa railroads in 1915 and 2016. Another station is to look at intermodal and to determine what this means. Another one would be about the revenue chart and the type of freight carried in 2015. And then we also have the Iowa Grain Facilities Rail Map and how that influenced where the railroads were placed. 
The next two days are spent considering global connections. So we're taking a look at supporting question three of how corn connects Iowa to different places around the world. Students can brainstorm some responses to this question, then move to the book, The Boy Who Changed the World. Only focus on the section about Norman Borlaug. He did a lot of work in research to try and help figure out how to produce higher yielding corn and spreading that knowledge to different areas in the world where food production was a struggle. Students spent some time in second grade learning about Mr. Borlaug, so hopefully this is a bit of a review. Then there's a video to help learn about supply and demand and how that can impact the production of corn. We want to talk about surplus and shortages to help understand some of the different things of the market. Take a look at this graph of the various corn exports by country in 2017. You could also look up a more recent graph to compare between now and then. Have students consider the variance in prices. Would it always cost the same for each country? Would there be differences? They might want to consider the types of transportation or the amount of travel required. Is there anything else that would or could affect the price? Students hopefully will remember the drought conversation earlier and mention weather. The last two days of this unit are spent on the summative assessment over the compelling question. There's a few ideas you can do. The question needs to be answered, but students could write a response, do a project or a presentation, or you could hold a group or a class discussion. I hope this video was a helpful resource as you prepare to teach the Midwest unit. As always, please reach out to your PLC leader, instructional coach, or curriculum facilitator if you have any questions or are in need of any additional support.